this program. Last week I spoke to you about the woman from the beginning and I promised you that today I'll be speaking to you on the position of women in the church. Come with me now to Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 from verse 13 to 15. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia a seller of purple of the city of Tiatira, which worshipped God heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Father, we thank you that we have women who are qualified to host the church to host the ministers of God. Father, we thank you and we pray that such women will continue to increase in our society. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. The story I've just read to you was how the church started in Europe. 
and a woman was instrumental to the beginning of the church in Europe. The Bible said the apostles, when they got to that part of the world, they went straight to a place designated as a place of prayer. I told you yesterday, or uh, last week, that Jesus Christ commanded his disciples, all those who saw him when he was ascending, to go to the upper room and pray until the Holy Spirit will come. These women, the Bible said, they have a place where they gather by the riverside to pray. Jesus Christ said, I am the water of life. These people, they went to the riverside to get water of life. And because God saw their dedication, he directed the apostles to that place. And when they got there, they were not disappointed. The Bible said, women were there praying. And when you look at the composition of the women there, the rich were there, the poor were there, Lydia was there, who was a rich woman, but her riches, her physical riches, did not stop her from going after the spiritual riches. And that was why they were there to pray. And you know what? The Bible said these women demonstrated certain qualities. One, the Bible said God opened their hearts. Two, the Bible said these women, they fear God. Number three, the Bible said they attended to what Paul was saying. In other words, they were not just hearers of the word. They were doers of the word. And do you know what interests me most? One of them said, if you have counted me faithful to the Lord, come and continue what we started here in my house. I have a place for God. And that is what I want you to understand as you are listening to me. The position of women in the church. As a woman, can you accommodate Jesus in your heart? As a woman, can you accommodate Jesus in your home? These two points, they are very, very important. The Bible is replete with the activities of women in the ministry of intercession. Their prayers for the coming of the Savior was noticeable. You get to Luke chapter 2, verses 36 and uh, to 38. You are going to see that the prayers of the women contributed to the coming of the Savior. In Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38. And there was one, Anna a prophetess, the daughter of Fanwe, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age, and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. Do you see that? 
this woman for more than 80 years was praying and fasting for the coming of the Savior, for the coming of the Messiah. And God honored her that at the time Jesus Christ was presented in the temple, she was there. So you can see here that the position of women in the church is very, very important, especially for intercession. Women prepare the way for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 1, verses 41 to 45, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth had the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe lived in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Look at that. Here we see Elizabeth and Mary. Elizabeth produced John, who was the forerunner of Jesus. And Mary produced the Messiah. The Bible said these women were full of the Holy Spirit. To the extent that John also shared in the fullness of the Holy Spirit while in the womb of Elizabeth. So you, with this you can see that right away from the beginning, God involved the women in things spiritual. Women prepared the way for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, they were created as heirs together of the grace of life. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not in that. Do you see that? There are many people in the church today. There are many men in the church who are suffering today. Why? Because of the maltreatment, maltreatment of women in the church. The Bible said, as a man, you must learn how to treat your wife with honor so that your prayers will not be hindered. Why? Because God sees women as partners in the church so that they can join in prayer so that they can as i was telling you last week bring up godly children their sensitive and loving nature and dear them to god women are very very sensitive women are very very loving you see unless a woman that is possessed Unless a woman that has been polluted by the devil. The nature of love is in them. They are wonderful vessels of prayer in the hand of God. That was what we read in Acts of the Apostles. So, how does God use women in prayers? Because I am talking about the position of the women in the church. Jesus says something. He said, It is written that my father's house shall be called a place of prayer. Unfortunately, today, many of us, we have missed what the church is all about. Many of us see the church as a place whereby we gather for social activities and things like that. The primary purpose of the church is to be a place of prayer. And God did not underrate women when it comes to prayer. 
they are there praying. So, how can God use women in prayers? I've listened to many women, oh, they don't allow us to preach. Oh, they don't allow us to teach. My dear woman, listen to what the Bible has to say today. Your primary duty to God is prayer. That is your primary duty. And let me tell you, a woman who is strong in prayer can never be limited. Let us now go and see how God uses women in prayer. Number one, he uses them to discourage sin and encourage the fear of God. Amen. God uses women to discourage sin and encourage the fear of God in men. Come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 25. I want to read from verse 26 to 31. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord live it, and as thy soul live it, seeing the Lord hath withholding thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thy own hand, now let thy enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thy hand made are brought unto my Lord. Let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil had not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thy enemies. Then shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of art unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood costless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thy hand made. The speaker here was no other person than Abigail. How can a woman know the program of God for such a person like David if she had not been a prayerful woman? Many of the things that Abigail said here were prophetic about what God would do in the life of David. Why? Because Abigail was a praying woman. Even though she was married to Nabal, who was a fool. But Abigail was full of the spirit of intercession. And look at the way she was used by God to dissuade David from committing murder. David would have gone to destroy everybody and kill everybody in the family of Naba. And God would have charged him with murder. But because of the intervention of a prayerful woman, the fear of God entered into David. He did not kill. And exactly as Abigail prophesied, God fulfilled for David. That was why later in future, David sent for Abigail after the death of her husband to be his wife. Do you see that? Your position in the church is to raise the altar of prayer, effective prayer, so that men will be blocked from sinning against God. See? Number two, to encourage men in their warfare against the enemies of God. 
Do you remember somebody called Deborah? You see, she encouraged another man who was the commander, Barak. Barak was afraid, but because of a woman who was spiritual, who was prayerful, he received the encouragement to wage the war against Sisera. And the battle was won. I want you to know this, that as a woman, God wants you to be a prayer pillar in the church to have time to pray so that the enemies of God will be destroyed. Number three, to prevail on God for the defense of his people. Look at Esther. In Esther chapter 4, verse 6, 16 to 17, look at how God used Esther through prayer and fasting to cancel the evil program of Ammon. And God used that to save our nation, our people. Why? Because she was fervent in prayer. It is unfortunate today that many women, instead of facing squally, the ministry of intercession, the ministry of prayer in the church, they were busy arguing over unnecessary things. God wants you to understand your position in the church to uphold the ministry of intercession. See, Esther was able to save her people, not because of salt or the but by prayer. Number four, the position of the women in the church as far as ministry of intercession is concerned is to arrest decadence and rot in the ministry. To arrest decadence and rot in the ministry. There was a woman in the Bible called Anna. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 13 to 19, she was there watching the children of Eli, how they were misbehaving. And this woman went into serious prayers and fasting and said, Lord, if you can give me a male child, I am going to bring God that boy to bring glory to your name, to bring honor to your name. And that was how Samuel was born as a result of the prayer of a woman. And we all knew what Samuel did. The Bible said, everybody in the land of Israel knew that God has raised Samuel up as a prophet. Why? Because of the activity of a woman, his mother. Samuel later became an administrator. He became a kingmaker. You see, many things like that. He was a prophet. He was a priest because of a praying mother. That is your position in the church. If there are people who are misbehaving in the church today, it is because the fire of prayer has gone down. Number five, to commend good deeds. To commend good deeds. When you turn to 2 Kings chapter 22, 14 to 20, the Bible said there was a time the Israelites neglected the house of God. But God raised up a young king by the name Josiah. And as they were cleaning the temple, God sent a woman, Hulda by name, a prophetess, to go and tell Josiah what he needed to do. To commend Josiah. To encourage him. And that is what God wants women to be doing in the church. To encourage holiness. To encourage goodness. To encourage genuine love. To encourage industry for God. Another thing is to start an assembly of believers. You see, that was what I read to you in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, 
verses 13 to 15. The church started in Europe through the activity of these women. And I believe the church that started in Europe came to America through the activities of women. I want you to understand this. Your position in the church is very, very important. God wants you to be prayer warriors, to be praying women. I told you in an act of the Apostles, chapter 16, the Bible talked about Lydia. This woman was a rich woman, but she was not proud. She had time for God. She had time for prayer. She was always there praying to the extent that the apostles, when they saw this woman, they knew that God's hand was on her. And the assembly started in her house. And that assembly that started in her house now spread all over Europe today. I want you to understand this as you are listening to me. That as a woman, you are very important to God. How virile is your prayer life? What time do you spend before God in prayer as a woman? For your husband? For your children? For your nation? You see? What time? If women will dedicate themselves to prayer, you are going to see a great change in the nation. You are going to see a great change in the community. You are going to see a great change in the church. Because when you pray, something must happen. When you pray, you are bringing down the hand of God. When you pray, you are destroying the works of the devil. When you pray, you are opening the way for the Spirit of God to move. You see, where people pray, God moves. And what is more than making God to move in your church, in your assembly, in your denomination? You don't need to wait for anybody to know you. No. You don't need to grapple for church offices. I must do this. I must be on the... No, 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 no. Engage yourself in the ministry of intercession. Soak yourself in prayer. And you are going to see a great revival. And that is what I have for you today. And I know the Lord will bless you. Next week, by the grace of God, I will be speaking on the characteristics of Christian women. How do you know a Christian woman? Father, I want to thank you because you are God. And I pray that the spirit of intercession will enter into every woman so that your church can become strong. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen.